Hello and welcome to all of our gold viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and one of the MCs here at Gold. And I'm here today with Karen Karashi, and we're going to talk about her upcoming presentation here. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. It's really nice to be here. It's lovely to have you here. Your topic is really fascinating. It's titled Craniosacral Therapy as a Supportive Developmental Tool in the NICU. This presentation is part of the add-on lecture pack for our Gold Neonatal Online Conference, which is titled Protect and Nurture Developmental Care for Neonatal Neuroprotection in the NICU. So uh, it, it's fascinating and I want to jump right in. But before we do that, tell us just briefly about your background. You are a physical therapist. Uh, I'm, tell I'm, me a a physical, I'm a physical therapist. Um, I started out doing pediatrics and I ended up in the NICU. I'd done pediatrics for five or six years for physical therapy. Um, I had done craniosacral therapy also. I had been trained in that and I was trained in a lot of different things for kids on the autistic spe spectrum. But I found myself in the NICU. I spent nine years in a level three NICU and absolutely found my home there. Absolutely loved it and worked there probably for a year until I had to relocate from one state to another. And that was, then it was COVID. So I couldn't go back into the NICU, mm. but um, got to able, I was able to incorporate craniosacral therapy into the NICU, which was when I started seeing real differences with babies with feeding issues and really was able to kind of expand what I did in the NICU and my practice there. Fascinating. Um, just give us a very short, I know you could talk about this for hours and it's a big, broad topic, but just for um, somebody who is not familiar with craniosacral therapy, just briefly, what is that modality? It's a fascially based modality. So we actually um, release restrictions of, of tightness in the fascia of the body and the body is all fascia. And so we mm -hmm. have what's called an intracranial membrane system in, in our between the hemispheres of our brain. Um, we use the bones as handles to access that intracranial membrane system and release restrictions there. So if we're releasing restrictions that are up in the cranial region, then you're working with your autonomic nervous system, your central nervous system, and any actually nervous system um, or any system in the body, the GI system. But it's definitely a fascial based modality where we just use a very light touch, five grams of pressure less to help release restrictions in the body. I just wanted to ask you that because, uh, you know, these little uh, fragile uh, uh, preterm infants here or in, in little ones in the NICU, they're very fragile. So I cannot imagine any big movement going on there, right? Like, uh, and you mentioned it's very light pressure. Yeah, it's a light, it's what we call five grams of pressure or less. So when you're in the NICU, it is definitely less. Um, it's just, you know, maybe the weight that you would use to touch your eye, eye back, you know, eye with not, not even that much pressure. It's just a very, very light, subtle touch that you're going to use to go in and palpate underneath the skin into the muscles to find these restrictions that are in the babies that are, are recurring just from being from the trauma of being in the NICU. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you were working in the NICU in the beginning, um, were there any barriers for you that people, maybe other staff were saying, oh, what is she doing there? Or I could do this. I mean, she's just like putting a little finger there. <laughs> How is this? Is this even working? Is this even good for anything? So uh, did you have to do a lot of educating when you were there? That is a great, great question. And thank you very much for asking it. Um, you get a lot of questions because it's a non-evidence-based practice. Um, but when you look at what is evidence-based, it's having success with one client one time. There's the evidence. Um, as a cranial psychotherapist, I'm not really into research. I'm into treating, but I did have to do a lot of education. I went and talked to um, the neonatologist that I worked with them, explained what cranial psychotherapy was. They felt that it was a safe modality. My supervisor went and took a class on it so that she could come back and say, no, this is a safe modality that can be used in the NICU. So I had a lot of support and I was really lucky that I had that support that they felt that this was a modality that was that could help babies. So I was very lucky. And you had some great success stories. Uh, would you mind telling us of just a little bit of what you've treated there and what you've seen just to give our viewers a little bit of an idea? I think that um, a lot of different things, but some that stand out in my mind are some of the babies that um, might've been vacuum assisted out. And so as they were vacuumed out, maybe they had a stretch um, on that intracranial membrane system that really kind of pulled things and being, and these babies we all know are it's just very cranky. They don't feed well and being able to go in and release some of those restrictions and kind of help the head to, or that central nervous system to calm down and even follow those restrictions that were going into the hyoid region that might have been affecting 
um, feeding, and that babies mm -hmm. then became better eaters after that. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned something very important there, um, because it's not obviously we want these babies to be comfortable and and you know experience you know no pain and all that, but also it is so important because the body is is one system, right? And and I think you explain it in a way if we pull and push on one area, it affects the other. So if let's say a baby had um, you know an injury from a vacuum or came you know very you know with high shoulders that of course affects number one you know it's painful number two it's also affects feeding and other you know other areas right very much so um, I don't think that we realize that we are one whole fascial system and so we have you know muscles and I talk about it in the presentations that we have muscles that attach from the base of the tongue to the hyoid from the hyoid to the sternum from the sternum you know down to our pubic bone from our pubic bone to our coccyx so we have this whole fascial train that if I can have a restriction anywhere in there, it can have an effect on my feeding. And we all know how important feeding is to our NICU babies, because essentially that's how they get discharged from the NICU is being able to be good eaters. Mm -hmm. How often ha does this have to be performed? Um, I, I mean, obviously it's a by case by case basis, but but um, it's probably not the one, th one time, right? I mean, is it a series of treatments? How does this work? It depends on the baby. Sometimes it can be just treated one time. Um, you know, it just it really depends on why they're in there, how long they're in, have the long they've been in there. I think that the longer they've been in there, the little bit more cranial sacral therapy they need. Um, you know, again, it's it's something that can be done one time a week. It can be done, you know, two times a week. You really have to understand how the NICU runs and understand with your caseload, how you can fit babies in and what, what's the most important thing. Maybe craniosacral is not as important as giving them a bath that day or teaching a parent how to get a bath that day. So you really have to gauge kind of what's the most important thing for the baby. But as mm -hmm. a modality, it can be used, you know, once a week, twice a week um, on babies depending on how long they're in there. On there. And also, um, I can also imagine because the touch is so light, there is no real risk that the baby is ever being overstimulated, right, by this treatment either. Right. And that's one of the things that we can do this while they're in the isolate. Um, my favorite time was actually during um, skin to skin time with mom or, or their caretaker, whoever was going to go home with them. Um, and it's something that you don't want to invade on that space between, you know, um, a, a parent and their child. But once they have holding, we like to have our babies held for two or three hours because we wanted to make sure that they were really benefiting from that bonding for, with mom and dad. And so there's times when you can come in while the baby's a little bit asleep on mom and do cranial sacral therapy on mom and baby at the same time. So um. you make it very non-invasive. That's beautiful. Thinking of it, making it like for mom and baby at the same time. It really, uh, that really speaks to me. It makes me really happy to hear. <laughs> well, uh, Karen, thank you so very much for being here with us today. And uh, thank you also for your presentation here at Gold. We're looking very much forward to it. And thank you so much for inviting me to speak. It's just been a pleasure to work with you all. And for our viewers now, if you would like to have more information about this uh, presentation and all the other presentations in this add-on package, we invite you to go to goldneonatal.com. On June 3rd, we're getting started with our open access keynote presentation by Dr. Niels Berkman, all of course on skin to skin, all the good stuff right there for you. So we hope to see you at the conference and please check out this wonderful package here as well. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye everyone. Thank you.